Hi, this is Chris from codereview.co.uk and in this video we're going to be looking at translations inside Symphony 2. So straight out of the box you get translations built into Symphony 2, however they're not enabled by default. Um, sometimes you'll see translations referred to as I18N. What that means is I and then 18 characters and then N. Uh, so by the time you explain that to someone, you might as well have just said internationalization, which is what I'll be referring to it as throughout the rest of this video. But just so that you're aware of what that means, a little bit of useless trivia for you there. Um, so some of the stuff inside translations for Symphony, there's there's a million different ways of doing it. Well, not a million, but you get my drift. It's one of the things where there isn't one definitive way of doing translations, um, but there are some sort of standard um, ways that most people do stuff. So when you first look at the documentation, um, which you probably only ever do if you're ever involved in a project that requires it, uh, but just so that you're aware, they do talk about coming up with this locale where you're going to be using these combinations of codes, the ISO 6391, the ISO alpha, whatever. So just to show you what they are, like the lowercase, um, like English EN, uh, German, DE, etc., France, FR, and then you're supposed to combine that with an underscore with like United Kingdom, so EN underscore GB, or uh, Germany is DE, DE, um, DE lowercase, underscore DE uppercase, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, needless to say, I, 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 whilst it says stuff about um, that in, in the documentation, I rarely use it. So if we look into, um, which one is it, this translation thingies? Is it that one or is it the next one down? Yeah, so this fallback translation locales, uh, it says, first of all, it looks under FR underscore FR, and then it will just look under FR. But the thing is, by default, it's more than likely your locale is going to come through on the request as just FR. So you can kind of ignore this. And even if you use this, um, so if you are if you decide that you're going to call your messages file messages.fr underscore FR, um, that won't actually work if you just pass in the code of FR, which is kind of crazy. But um, I, I can understand why it doesn't, but yeah, it's one of them. So just what I normally do is just stick with this. And interestingly, so do the guys at Symphony. So out of the box, when you first generate a bundle, if you generate the full bundle structure, it will generate your translations folder. And one of the items in there, or the only item in there, will be this messages.fr.xlf, uh, so this xlif format. Um, and in there, you've got one translation, which is going to translate Symphony 2 is great into this. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, but some sort of French. And then, so just to close it down, yeah, so as I've mentioned by def I think I've mentioned by default the translator is not actually enabled in Symphony, um, but it's built in out of the box. Then we've got this default locale. Locale is a parameter, so the param in is in our params YAML, and by default our locale is EN, so English basically. And then, yeah, I've just got these open just to show you my controller, nothing in it just renders off to this index and the index is basically there's nothing in it. So we'll get started, show you the page that we've got going on. Not much going on, it's just got the, the controller code and the template code so we can we can see what's going on there later on. So there's two different, well as I say there's a few different ways of, tran of doing translations inside Symphony but I'm going to show you two here. So we're going to start off with a standard way of doing stuff. So we'll put in here Symphony Two is great, and then you would do pipe trans, or you can do it a different way, which is p, and then we'll do. We don't have to put the p in, obviously, but trans, and then we can just close that off with n trans, even though that's not one that's automatically code completed in the PHP Storm. Strangely, Symphony Two is great. Okay, and then have I spelled that right? Feels wrong looks right yeah then we go to our translator page press refresh we got symphony 2 is great symphony 2 is great interestingly um well nothing's been translated even though we've run it through the translator but technically um well yeah nothing has been translated but it has been run through the translator but it's fallen back to our default locale which is english and we don't have a translation file for that um but we could interestingly which we'll cover in a sec 
but if we then go in and manually override the locale so we'll go into our controller and we need to inject request so we'll just inject request from HTT foundation um, request 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 set locale FR and then we'll just refresh this aha uh -huh, nothing happens okay so everything looks okay why is that that's because we've not enabled the translator so if we enable it and then refresh it we've now got this duplicated translation now we could go in and then add in another one so we could add in DE for example so German and then we could add in this translation so what would it be like symphony to ist grows I don't know how you get that B uh, thing and actually I'll, I'll tell you straight up I cheated and, and used vowel fish to get that um, so yeah I don't know anything about languages <laughs> oh, that's funny anyway so we've cheated and we've overridden and then we can just do DE and if we refresh yeah we get this so it is working and then if we just use any old rubbish and then refresh it drops back to English and indeed what we could do is kind of weird but we could do EN and then we could have something completely different like I like cake and then refresh now oh, we're still on the German translation there aren't we so oh no, the, the nonsense translation so if we just change that up ah, it's kind of weird isn't it because what you would expect that to it's kind of um, counterintuitive what's happening there and this is one of the things that out of the box I actually don't like I don't think that they should use this standard English syntax what they should do is do something more like this like welcome.text and then so every time that you go through and change this you wouldn't need to to change it in lots of different places um, you just you have one placeholder and keep it the same for all the different languages so then they all become welcome.text and then inside the template instead in here we'll just do so welcome.text and we can just leave this in as any old nonsense just to prove a point really and then just refresh and you can see one of them works and one of them doesn't so if we drop into a different language where are we? our controller change it over to DE and then get the German one properly because it's, it's still um, using that, that correct string so it's still using this welcome.text in our template even though that's in English I mean that could literally be in any language um, and as you'll see uh, in if you ever use the FOS user bundle out of the box they do um, use this sort of syntax where it's like this dot notation uh, and there's another piece in here about the overriding so uh, if you ever need to actually override a, a bundle so for example if you was trying to override something in a bundle someone else's bundle then you would put it in a higher level bundle and then basically that's what this is is, is telling you you can put stuff in uh, either app resources which overrides anything dot app resources uh, and then the bundle name translations directory which will override everything except the stuff in the top level and then resources translations in any bundle um, is like the least preferred uh, and that's good because that sort of gives you that um, inheritance chain or sort of override chain which you will see sometimes if you're ever if, yeah, as I've mentioned if you use something like FOS user bundle you will override some of their templates by default um, to maybe make your login look a bit different or, or whatever but you do it in like a higher level and there's a few different again symphony there's always a few different ways of doing stuff but uh, you can either go straight into the top level and do everything like in here so you could create a translations in fact let's just do it let's just go ahead and just create this translations directory and we'll demonstrate it so drop in a oops that's not right drop in a translations directory not a file and then in here we'll just copy in the the, the German one I always want to say Dutch get shouted up by somebody uh, and then in here we could just change this to master override something like that and then in theory this one should override but I think we're in are we in German I might need to just clear the cache as well let's just clear the cache PHP app console cache clear and then go back 
Are we actually in German? Yeah, we are in German. Resources app. Oh, we're in the wrong place. Oops. App resources is where it should be, not just there. And refresh that. And then we get this master override. Um, yes, technology in action, or me making mistakes in action. So you can see that there's this inheritance chain. That's not the right tab. This inheritance chain that goes on. Where are we? I'm, I've lost myself here. Um, that goes on there where we can put stuff in. And again, as I've mentioned, you will see that kind of throughout Symphony. But uh, yeah, it's just one of the things that's good to be aware of uh, when doing uh, stuff with translations. That the higher the higher the level, the, the greater the sort of the override. So if you've got bundles that you're bringing into your own project, you can override them without changing. You know, So if you'd brought in a third-party bundle uh, and this had a translation in it somewhere that you didn't like, you can either create a, um, well, create a translation in your root or you can sort of override the bundle in here, which is a slightly different, more advanced topic, I guess. But um, it's good to know that you can override the their translations by doing that you just basically recreate their structure and uh, override it if you're doing it bundles wise anyway um, but there you go so that's that's the basics of translation